has written beautifully about the people living in West Texas, outside Austin in the Hill Country. They loved Franklin Delano Roosevelt. They thought he was great. They read all about him. They knew all about his wonderful fireside chats. But they couldn't hear those radio fireside chats because they didn't have electricity. In fact, Carol writes in agonizing detail about the difficulty of the lives of those people outside Austin. Women bent by the effort of their lives, dragging heavy objects around just to cook, just to clean, just to eat. Their lives dominated by sun up to sundown, very difficult to read later at night, to have dominion over their own lives. Why? How could this be possible in 1930s America? No electricity. Well, the reason was that where there were giant, giant power monopolies, private companies controlling the generation and transmission of electricity in America. They each had their own regions. They each did their own thing. They were gouging the rich, systematically leaving out the poor, and just the propaganda machine of these guys was unbelievable. And so although electricity comes to America in the 1880s, it takes until 1910 that ordinary people in cities have it. And in 1930, 90% of farmers in America did not have electricity. It was a luxury good. And so the 1932 election was all about electricity. FDR said, the people have paid and pay dearly, and they're beginning to understand that reform is needed because they've been fleeced of millions of dollars. And he ran on electricity, and he was attacked for being un-American, Bolshevik, subversive, because what he wanted to do was break up the power monopolies, make sure that people in rural areas had electricity, and also support public systems that you know, could hold the private systems to a yardstick. We could see how cheap it could be if public systems were allowed to operate. We had never seen a monopoly like the depredations of the electricians in the history of the world. They lied, they misled everybody, they had incredible political power. We'd never seen that until high-speed internet access in America, which is the same kind of story. And even though you need uh, high-speed internet connection, high-capacity connection to get educated, to get a job, to send your kids to school these days, to be part of 21st century society. Fully a third of Americans don't have a wire at their homes. The affluent, you know, those of us around here, we're paying way too much for second-class connections, which are by and large provided by the cable monopolies in America, which have divided up the country, never compete with each other, and charge whatever they want. And for 18 million Americans, internet access isn't available at any price, because it just hasn't been built where they are. So parents take their kids to parking lots outside public libraries to do their homework, because that's the place they can get access to free Wi-Fi provided by the libraries, because they don't have a wire at home. This is a tremendous digital divide inside America between the poor and rural and the rest of us. It's also a huge problem for America's competitiveness as a nation because other countries take this very seriously and they're investing in fiber. In America, a high capacity connection is going to be sold to you by the cable companies and it's not going to be available in rural areas or in poor areas. And this is particularly incredible. Look at this map of America. The green spots show places where at least 60% have access to a crappy DSL connection, right? The red spots show where even that doesn't exist, and that's a lot of America. So that's why it's such a big problem for the country. What happened was that, systematically, the cable guys took over Wired, and the wireless guys, AT&T and Verizon, backed away from the wired marketplace. They just can't make money there. So they're almost entirely wireless companies. Now, life is great if you're a cable monopolist, and they're getting 99% of new subscriptions for high-speed internet access, and Comcast revenues are soaring. Really, it's a quiet life for them. Um, so even though high-speed internet access is just like electricity, just like clean water, you need it to survive as an American. We need it as a country to keep up with the rest of the world. It's being treated like a luxury good, not like a utility. So what did FDR do when he came into office? He 
established oversight, which we don't have over high-speed internet access, made sure there was oversight over electricity, he subsidized rural areas, and he made sure that public systems were available to hold people to a yardstick. Now, in West Texas, when LBJ brought electricity to those Hill people, they named their children after him because he had changed their lives. And the leader that takes this on will feel empowered. Thank you very much. Thank you.